Continuing with the nomenclature series, here we're going to talk about hydrates. And before we do that, let's see if we remember what we call these uh, compounds here. We have barium and chlorine in one, so this is called barium chloride. And so this is lithium chloride. Okay, this is the sulfate ion, so we call this magnesium sulfate. And this is a nitrate ion, so we call that strontium nitrate. So this is nothing new, we've seen these before, but now we're going to make hydrates out of them. What is a hydrate? Well, it turns out when we have these, these uh, compounds and we place them in a water solution or near water where they can absorb water, water is an interesting molecule. We have an oxygen and two hydrogens, and because of the way it's structured, the oxygen side of the molecule tends to be more negative and the hydrogen side of the molecule tends to be more positively charged. So this is what we call a polar molecule. And because of that, it can make weak bonds between the negative or positive side and the negative and positive side of other molecules. So because of that, for example, barium chloride can join with two of these hydrates. So the way is we place a dot there, and then we have two water molecules that will bond weakly to the barium chloride, and so what do we name that? And so same with lithium chloride, lithium chloride will bond with a single water molecule, and magnesium sulfide, or sulfate, I should say, SO4, will bond with, I believe, seven, yes, seven of these water molecules, if enough water is present, and then the strontium nitrate will bond with four water molecules, four H2O. And so, what do we name those? Well, again, we're going to use these prefixes to indicate the number of water molecules that we have. So in this case, this would be called barium chloride. And since there's two of them, we call that dihydrate. All right, so now we have the next one, which is lithium chloride, joined with one molecule that it would be a monohydrate. And here we have magnesium sulfate, and it would join up with as many as seven water molecules in these weak polar bonds, and so we use heptahydrate to indicate that. And finally we have the strontium nitrate, and it will meet up or join up with four hydrogen or four water molecules, and so we use tetrahydrate. And those kind of join on and to the outside of the molecule, wherever the polar end of the water molecule can do that. And then, of course, to get rid of the hydrate, if you want to get rid of the water, we usually can heat it up and uh, dry them out. So if we heat it up and so the water evaporates, eventually the weak bonds will break and the water will disappear and you'll go back to the original molecules that you had without the water. So, But these, these molecules right here have the tendency, when put in, in, um, in contact with water, for them, the water molecules to join and connect to them with these polar ends of the molecule. And so we call them hydrates, and depending upon how many water molecules are joined, we call them with the pre proper prefix, di if there's two, mono if there's one, hepta when there's seven, tetra when there's four, and so forth. So those are the naming conventions we use for hydrates.